Welcome to Sailing Avanti. We are Gerard and Jacqueline sailing our 41 foot monohull Avanti around the world from Cape Town, South Africa. Chocolate and coffee. Two things that come from nature as small beings that have created empires. We see it everywhere, daily, but do we really know where it comes from and exactly how it's made? This week we're making our own chocolate from plant to slab and picking our own coffee beans and see how it's made. Will we convert Gerard to living a caffeinated life? Today we're in the beautiful mountains outside of Manizales, um, about an hour by, um, half an hour by bus and then a 40 minute walk. And we're on, it's actually a hotel, but they do chocolate and a chocolate workshop. So that's what we're going to do here and um, learn about the cocoa beans and hopefully make our own slabs. Did you know that at one stage in history, cocoa beans were worth more than gold per gram? And not only that, but it was used to make a beverage before it was made into the slabs we know today. And it all starts with these small little flowers on a very simple tree. Growing into these big fruits that we would then turn into chocolate loved by most. We take our seats in the class and get our first taste on the sweet flesh part that surround the beans. I'm adding lots of drama. Yes. <laughs> the suspense. Yeah. There you go. The suspense. There you go. Voila. Voila. Get now. <laughs> How I look here. This is how a seed look if we cut it in a half. After being dried, it's time to go into the roasting pan. Right through here. There you go. Now Don't burn it. Powder. Don't burn it. Right? It's not music. Don't burn so it. We say the Swiss are the best, so you, it's up to you to oh, prove it. Don't, don't do it too long, the Swiss must do it for long. Oh, yes. Come on, Swiss, go. After roasting, the best quality beans are chosen and the outer shells removed to get to the buttery inside bean. This is bad. Yeah. African, African thing, come on. <laughs> African dog. We use this in Africa too, don't go. Mm. Just sorry. I'm wasting. Don't uh, what are you doing? Don't, don't kill it. It's just uh... <laughs> like this 24 hours. Easy. Yeah, that's how they did it. After grinding by hand, the pieces go into the grinding machine with added milk powder and sugar depending on your taste. The machine grinds it into a smooth liquid without adding any heat. And this is where we can taste the fruit of our labor for the first time. Wow. Mm. Kind of problem. Okay, you do it. It's gonna look like a child from kindergarten did it, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. More or was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot more. You can do it twelve of them. Lots more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't be stingy. Like one, two, more. And like four spoons. <laughs> In the middle, and later you will, uh, you can be as perfectionist as you want to be. Okay, okay. drop a fourth one. Good. Perfect. Okay. Where's your other tea? Where's the coffee bean? Wrong with chocolate, you know? What can go wrong? That's why I love this morcho. What can go wrong? It's chocolate. Everybody loves chocolate. Good. What? 
Today I'm drinking another local Colombian beer. It's called an Andina Cerveza. It's also just a lager and it's also quite a popular one. It is one of the cheaper ones, so I'm not sure why, but this one is uh, sometimes on special for 11,000 pesos for a six pack in the supermarket. So it's really very affordable. Um, it's got 4% alcohol and it's a 330ml can, so same, same as what we used to. It's still a very refreshing lager. It's not a, I think compared to the Club Columbia and the Aguila, it's definitely, the taste is not that good, but um, it's a decent lager and for a very decent price. So I think overall for this one, I will rate it a seven and a half, seven and a half out of 10. With an early departure the next morning, we head back to the bus station. We are hopping on a bus from Manizales to Chinchilla to visit a coffee farm. Both these farms offer accommodation, but we decided to base ourselves in the city and explore from there. So we arrived at the coffee farm and the only thing I know about coffee is that there's a lot of coffee beans that comes from Africa, specifically Ethiopia. But um, the rest is, yeah, well, will be all new news to me. I'm not a big coffee drinker, so excited to see um, how they roast it and how it arrives uh, in the cup. Our day starts with getting our baskets and hats ready for the field for harvesting. We see the Arabica beans growing next to the house and you can see the young fields growing in the background. This coffee variety grows best in altitudes from 1,800 meters or more. Every bean has two seeds, so how do we open it? It's very simple. We close our hand and we push. This is the mark of the flower. Yes, a little rounded mark where the flower was at the very beginning. And the, the other side is the area in which the bean was attached to the plant. Mm -hmm. So through this side, we push out the seeds. Mm -hmm. Pulpa. Pulpa. <laughs> so what do we do with this? We can make a jelly, we can make ice cream with this. You cook it with some sugar, it's quite nice taste. But, and you can dehydrate this and make tea. But most people, what we do is we ferment it because this is a very nice fertilizer for the soil. But you need to compost it for approximately one year because it contains caffeine and caffeine and other volatile components can burn the soil, can make some damage to the soil. So you just simply accumulate this into a building and you wait for one year and, and it's ready. A liquid that is called mucílago in Spanish. Mucílago is the natural sugar of whatever fruit. It's a combination between fructose, glucose and also some uh, cellulose from the plants, some fibers and uh, natural oils, that's why it's slippery. What do we need to do? When the sugar fermentates, it becomes a bitter taste for the coffee. So what we need to do, the benefit consists on removing the skin and washing the seeds very well to remove all of the sugar to make sure that the seeds are going to be completely smooth. And when this plant is approximately five weeks, it starts to open. So the plants that you see here, they were planted approximately five weeks ago. Five five weeks mm -hmm. and that's why they have opened and they have produced two rounded leaves mm -hmm. so this one we call it match in spanish fósforo because it looks like a match mm -hmm. like a lime match. and this one we call it chapola why in spanish at least in colombia that's how we call the moths ah a little moth is a chapola yeah. so it looks like a moth mm -hmm. like a butterfly and that's why we call it chapola. Now that we knew how they planted their trees, it was time for us to go picking some coffee cherries for ourselves. Coffee trees can grow much larger than this, but Colombians being short people and younger trees providing better quality beans, they cut them down completely after seven years when they are about three meters tall. 
This year, Colombia's coffee region experienced abnormally high rainfall. This resulted in an extended picking season of almost seven months compared to the normal three-month picking period. Once picked, it was time to start the coffee making procedure. The next step was to put it in a hopper and to put it into a machine that removes the outer skin. Once the outer skin is removed, the coffee beans are put into a bath of water so that it can be washed with the bad quality beans and the shells that remained rising to the top of the water and being drained off to separate them from the good beans. When the coffee is too wet, after you remove the second shell that it has, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. You can remove that shell and the seed is green. Mm -hmm. If the coffee is too wet, it's difficult to remove that shell. And once the shell is removed, you cannot dry it anymore. Because if you try to dry it like this, it loses the taste. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the air... This is the 16, this is a quarter of an inch, 16, 64 parts. So 16 is the minimum for exportation. The coffee that is 16 passes through here, but finishes here. That is the extra cost. The coffee that stays on top is the supremo and the premium cost. Yeah. What are we going to drink? The biggest ones. Mm -hmm. Those two. Oh. Together. Yes. The thing is that the higher the part is, more uh, percentage of supremo usually they have but less quantity yes mm -hmm. the plant produces bigger mm -hmm. beans but less beans <laughs> and you can see how mm -hmm. the beans fall so that is the extra 16 15 14 and this is the next cup <laughs> <laughs> Even with so much effort and love going into selecting the right beans, we also learned that being a good barista is so much more complicated than just pressing the start button on a machine. There are 101 ways to mess up even the best quality of coffee. So these tintos, as they're called here in Colombia, is what's mostly had by um, the locals in the street and you can find these carts almost everywhere. Um, they're super cheap, but the sad thing is they're very sugary, so you have to ask for them without sugar if you don't want sugar. Um, and the reason why they put sugar in is one of the saddest things we learned on the farm is that the Colombians, or the normal population, don't even drink the scraps, so the pieces that went all the way to the bottom level. They even export that and actually import very cheap coffee um, for, for the locals to drink because it's cheaper. Um, so most people, although from Colombia and even the farmers that farm these great beans, might never even taste their own quality roast, which is quite sad. And I couldn't, I don't understand how this is a sustainable world where we're importing things that are growing right here. So it doesn't make sense to me, but that's my rant for today. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week in Manizales. Next week, we visit Guatape's artificial lakes and famous rock before going to Medellin, once the most dangerous city in the world. Please give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment with any questions. We cannot thank our patrons enough for supporting the making of these videos. If you'd like to join them, you'll find a link in the description below.